Amen. Who's glad to be in the house today? Well, I want to welcome you guys back to our series that we've been doing, The Parables of Jesus, looking at stories that Jesus told um, in the Bible, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, in the New Testament. And we've been looking at those stories the last six weeks, and we've been unpacking them, we've been breaking them down, we've been looking, how do these things apply to our life, and what is Jesus teaching us through these things? And so if you missed any of the weeks, you could tap in at Crossover 813 on YouTube, and you could catch up a little bit. But I'm excited because today officially is Back to Church Sunday. Yeah. And so I know there's some of you that haven't been to church in a while, or, you know, you're coming back, and whatever the case is, and we're glad you're here today. Crossover fam, make some noise for all the first-time guests, guests we haven't seen in a minute. We got hundreds of people tapping in online. Make some noise for the online crowd. Welcome to you guys as well. And if you are here for the first time today, I want to encourage you, when service is over, go to the center of the lobby. We have a free gift for you. If you're worshiping online, it's your first time, you could go to crossoverchurch.org and uh, tap in on the I'm New link, and we'll send you something in the mail as well. So let me ask this. Has, has anybody here ever had a relationship with God? This is an honest moment here. And then you strayed away and you fell off. Anybody like me? Like me, my hand is up too, right? So I grew up in Philly and I grew up in a Christian home. Some of you know my story. My dad was actually a pastor. I'm what's called a PK, pastor's kid. And so, but I had my season where I strayed away from God. And I knew God was real, but I was just looking out there in the streets and seeing all the other stuff. And, and, and I wanted to try, I wanted to taste what was out there. So for a season of my life, I was chasing after money and material things and girls and having fun. But the more I chased, the more I found I, I couldn't catch it. I mean, there was some temporary fun, but it never seemed to last. And it was always kind of this elusive thing. And soon I found, like, man, I'm just empty inside. I'm empty. Right? And I wondered, like, coming back to God, trying to get my life right, because I did it multiple times. I had to go to church, like, every time the doors were open. And so there was multiple times I would go up and pray, and God, forgive me, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. But then I did it again, and then I did it again. Anybody can relate to that, right? And, and once you do that so many times, you could begin to question, like, can God really still forgive me? Because I'm tripping. I'm probably going to mess up again. I don't know if God can ever use me. I want to tell you today that God can use you. God can forgive you. God can transform you. God can change you. And look, you're looking at somebody that, that finally got on the right track. And I've been on the track for many, many years now. And, and God flipped my life around. So if that's been you during a season or maybe even this season, then today's message is for you. It's for all of us to remind us on some things. But Jesus shared this parable in Luke chapter 15. It's for us today. Now let me go back to the beginning of Luke chapter 15. We shared this a couple of weeks ago. Jesus was getting some, he was getting some one-star reviews. He wasn't doing too good on, on Yelp, on Google, on Facebook. And, and some people were saying stuff about him because he was attracting some of uh, the wrong crowd to come and listen to him speak, so they thought. But that's who you want to attract, right? You want to attract the people that need help, right? But they're like, I can't believe Jesus has got all these people coming to hear him speak. But Jesus was an amazing storyteller, amazing communicator. And all kinds of people of diverse backgrounds were, were coming, sinners and saints, right? And so these people are complaining about Jesus. And he got some bad reviews. And I shared a couple weeks ago. Uh, about a couple that came here at the very beginning of the series for the first time. And I met them out in the lobby, and I asked them, hey, how'd you guys hear about Crossover? And they laughed, and they said, actually, it was from a bad review, a one-star review. That said the church was kind of wild and loud. And they said, we looked at each other, and we're like, we got to go check that church out. And so they have been here every week during this whole series and they just went through the 3D growth track. They're officially members. And today in this service, they got the good seats. They got the good seats. They right up in the front row right here. Give it up for Rob and Deb right there. So y'all y'all wild. Cro crossover Church, y'all wild. Y'all wild, right? You never know what can happen from a bad review. God can use anything, right? 
So Jesus is getting these one-star reviews from really a lot of the Pharisees, the religious leaders, saying that he was hanging around and attracting notorious sinners and even sitting down to eat with them and treating them like friends. So Jesus responds to that bad review, uh, not with one parable, but with three. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the first two. We looked at the lost sheep. We looked at the lost coin. Today, we're going to look at that third one, and we're going to talk about the lost son. So Luke 15, starting in verse 11, Jesus tells the story. I love the way the message translation says it. It says, there once was a man who had two sons. Somebody say, two sons. The younger said to the father, father, I want right now. Somebody say, right now. I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them, and it wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, what did he do with everything he had? He wasted it. Now, just from those couple of verses, y'all, a whole lot just happened. I want you to take some notes today. If you didn't know, we have an app. You can download the Crossover app. Take some notes in there. And and Jesus is responding again to the one-star review people, right? But at the same time, like, these parables are layered. And there's a message for everybody. Because the message that's also there in some other layers is reminding us, even if we're doing good and we're not lost, hey, y'all better stay on point because this is how you can get lost. I want to remind you how you can get lost. So, So there's all kinds of lessons in this parable. Jesus is warning us of how a lot of us raised our hand and said we fell off, we got distant from God at one time. There's a warning here to make sure we don't get lost and wrecked. So so how does that happen? Three things I want to give you really quick. Number one is we get lost when we want it now. Oh, yeah. And we live in a culture where we are programmed to get everything right now. I want it now. I deserve it now, I'm entitled to it now, and we got these mechanisms that we can get it now. We can get it right now. It's called a credit card. We're going to pay 24.9% interest, and we're going to pay three times the amount of what it really was, but I'm going to get it right now. Shoot, it was on sale. But you paid three times the amount of what it was, anyways, right? But so people, they want it right now, And they just can get it now, and that's that spirit of entitlement. And we see that this young son, he had that attitude. He says, I want it now. Somebody say now. Now. Type that in the chat if you're at home. Um, He said, give me my share of the estate right now. Now, generally, if you're going to get an inheritance, somebody has to what? die usually, right? Or if you're really rich, you might be a trust fund baby. Um, You can get money. You can tap into that, but you got to be a certain age. Like, you know, so, but he says, no, I want it right now. I I want it now, dad. I want it now. And so his father gave it to him. And the scripture says he spent all of it. Here's the second way we get lost and wrecked. Number two is we get lost when we're undisciplined. Simple habits can keep us on point. Keep us on track, right? Simple habits. They, they can keep us in the lane where we need to be. We get in a rhythm. And anybody here travel regularly? Do some people in, in the room travel? I, I travel on a regular basis, usually a couple of times a month. And a lot of times when I travel, it gets me off my regular rhythm. We traveled this week. We didn't even get into the hotel room. Uh, Pastor Christopher and I went, went to that event where we got the $20,000. Praise God, right? So... <laughs> But we didn't get to our room and get settled till it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. And then we had to get up early and go to the event, and it was a long day. And I mean, it was, it, was, it was great. It was amazing. But when you travel, you can get off rhythm in the time that you spend with God, in the time that you go to sleep, the time that you wake up, the time that you reflect, the time that you read the Word, the time that you maybe work out physically. Like all the different things you would do when you're at home, you can get off rhythm. And then a lot of times when you get undisciplined and off rhythm, you eat bad. Anybody know about that? Right? And so when you get off rhythm and you get undisciplined, sometimes it's hard to jump back in, isn't it? Anybody there? With spiritual disciplines, it could be the same way. If you stop praying, if you stop reading God's word, if you stop coming to church 
and worshiping together in biblical community and fellowshipping and learning together and serving together and doing those things. If you get off rhythm with that, man, sometimes it's hard to jump back in. That's why we got to do a back to church Sunday for you. Come on back, right? And those spiritual disciplines, man, those are some of the things that keep us on point. Community keeps us on point. And when we don't have those things in our life, we can get lost and we can start to lose our way. Our vision can start to get blurry. Here's the third thing we see in these verses. Number three, we get lost when we're dissipated. 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 What does that mean? It's not a word that we use a lot of times in everyday culture today, right? Here's the definition of dissipated. Here's what it means. It means overindulging in sensual pleasures. Ooh, our culture is all about overindulging, ain't it? It sure is. Like, we got a word for it to make it sound cool. Binging. Binge watching. Right? How, how many of y'all binge watch on Netflix that new season comes out of your show? And it comes out and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to watch an episode. The cliffhanger at the end. Next episode starts in five, four, three. Boop! I'm wide awake now. I'll just watch one more. In the end, another cliffhanger. Another one. And before you know, you stayed up all night. You got to get up for work tomorrow. Right? Indulging. Some people indulge in streaming. But some people indulge in alcohol. They indulge in drugs. They indulge in popping pills. They indulge in going out clubbing and, and hooking up with all kinds of of random people in our culture celebrate sensual pleasure like get all you can while you can that's what they say and when we indulge it might be fun temporarily but man when you come off of that dopamine hit that adrenaline high that 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 adrenaline rush like when you come down off of that and you crash you're going to be in a worse place than you were before and there's even more pain that you just layered on top of it when you become un discipline. That's why Jesus is talking about it here, telling the story, right? And so this lost son in Luke 15, let me fast forward this to 2023 so maybe you could see it a little bit. I'm going to modernize it a little bit and, and kind of take you to Tampa. So if we were in Tampa and this happened in 2023, uh, this younger brother, he, he lived down on Bayshore Boulevard. You know Bayshore Boulevard, some of them big mansions down there? Oh yeah, yeah. That was his crib. His dad owned a big company, he was real well off. And so he had a trust fund that when he turned 25 years old, he was going to get access to millions of dollars. But when he turned 18, he was entitled. He said, Dad, I want it now. I'm 18. I'm an adult now. Anybody ever had an 18-year-old? Oh, Lord, pray for us. I'm an adult now. Y'all don't know nothing about adulting. What? Right? So he said, I want it now. Dad, so after he's whining and begging and crying, finally his dad gives him access to the bank account. Immediately he calls his boys and says, yo, pack your bags, meet me at my crib. In one hour, we going to Vegas. Woo! Right? So they pull up. He got a stretch limo out there, the stretch Rolls Royce limo. Uh, they drive over to the private airport, him and his squad, and they take a private jet all the way to Las Vegas, and they're drinking champagne on the plane, and they partying, living it up, talking about what they're going to do. They get to Vegas, another stretch limo picks them up again and takes them to the Bellagio Resort right there on the Strip, and they got a penthouse suite right up there in the top, and oh man, they're like living it up. Goes to the casino, spends some money, 50 grand on the table, loses it. Ah, we got millions more. It's all good. Guys, we need to go shopping. Let's go down to the mall. Let's go down to the Vegas Mall on the Strip Miracle Mile. Let's go down there. And he bought everybody some designers, bought them like jewelry. Everybody in his squad got an iced out Rolex. And so they are ready now to hit the Strip. They ready to go hit the club. So they go to the club that night, and they are just making it rain at the club buying drinks for the whole room. Everybody is like, who is this young millionaire? Who is this guy? He's amazing. I want to be his friend. I want to get him on my podcast. This guy's incredible, right? And just when he thought that everything was going well and he had everything that he needed, that temporary high began to fall apart, began to crash. But there's another guy that's right here, part of our church family, that's got a story that connects with that as well. And so 
Check out this video about this guy named Will. This is your boy Will here, aka DJ Just Will, also known as Wilda. I wanted to make this video really quickly just to let you guys in on a little bit of my story as an entrepreneur and what I like to think of myself as an innovator. Man, my whole life I enjoyed sports, I enjoyed uh, making people laugh, smile, dance, but I never knew what I really wanted to do. But it always felt like dance found me. Some way, somehow, I was always dancing. So after high school and a little bit of college in 2009, I decided to take a leap of faith and move to LA. I moved with no money in my pocket, just a lot of hunger, heart, and determination. Man, I was really blessed. I got to backup dance for some of my favorite artists. I got to choreograph music videos for stars. And I also got to do, you know, things I never saw in my wildest dreams. I worked with Usher, Serena Williams, did campaigns for BET Awards. I was blessed to have my own TED Talk. And all in that time period, my YouTube channel was going crazy. I reached over 2 million subscribers and just had hundreds of millions of views on my videos. Now with that came all of the things that, you know, come with Hollywood. The money, the cars, you know, getting a house, the fame in my industry. But even with all of that, I still felt so empty inside. And to be real, I couldn't figure it out. I searched and I really didn't know what was missing. Now, since 2020, I've gone through a lot, a lot of life change, a lot of loss. And although my life is nothing like what I pictured it as, something happened, something changed in me. You know, now when I'm in community with believers, when I hear a worship song, when I hear a great sermon, I feel like this fire that I can't explain, something that I thought I would only get by dancing behind a star or reaching this pinnacle in my career. Now I feel it even when I'm feeling down, defeated and low, the joy and the presence of my faith, my God, his hands over my life, there's nothing like it. And I just wanna encourage anybody out there that maybe you, you know, maybe you've hit some goals. Maybe you have reached the mountaintop in your career. Maybe you're thriving, but you still don't know why you feel like you feel. I want to tell you that there's more out there. There's something deeper. There's something better than we could even imagine. And I'm not speaking from a place of having it all figured out. I still go through my pain. I still go through my dark times. But now I have something that's greater than me, greater than my own strength, greater than my own talent. Saying all that to say this, you can get lost. Man, I was so lost. But God has the best GPS. He will find you anywhere. And he found me. Today I'll be performing Lost Son at the request of the amazing Pastor Tommy. Love, light, and God bless y'all. Hope you enjoy. They don't, they don't know. You know we need it. They don't, they don't know. They don't know. Foot on the devil's neck to the drifted Pangea. I'm moving all my family from Chatham to Zambia. Trying to snap photos of fam, Leah. My daughter look just like Sia. You can't see her. You can feel the lyrics of spirit coming in Braille. Tumming of the underground, come and follow the trail. I made Sunday candy, I'm never going to hell. I met Kanye West, I'm never going to fail. It's this is my part, nobody else speak. This is my part, nobody else speak. This little light of mine. Glory be to God, yeah. I'ma make sure that they go where they can't go. If they don't wanna ride, I'ma still give them raincoats. Know what God said when he make the first rainbow. Just know this at the end of fuck too late for the angels. Now you're lost, lost in the heat of it all. But every damn still damn took you to Spain, lost. Los Angeles, India, lost on a train, lost I'm trying to keep my faith But I'm looking for more This prayer's for everybody that feels that they're too Somewhere messed up I can feel For everyone that feels they said I'm sorry too and many times You can world. never go too far when you can't come back home again That's why I need God Every day, every morning, every night. Wow. Wow. Praise God. We have so much talent here at our church, man. Amazing. So many incredible stories. So many lost sons and lost daughters that have been found. Here's what Jesus said happened next to that lost son. About that time, his money ran out. A great famine swept over the land. He began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. 
The man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. So fast forward that back to 2000. In 23, and our boy from Bayshore Boulevard, he gambled away and wasted all his money in just a matter of weeks. Millions of dollars that his dad took a lifetime to make and accumulate. He just blew it. At the same time, inflation hit and a recession hit. People started to lose their jobs. And soon, when the money ran out, the friends left. His whole squad left and went back to Tampa and wasn't picking up his calls. They were ghosting him. And all the new friends that he made in Vegas that all wanted to be around him and hang out, as soon as the money evaporated, all the friends did as well, and he found himself alone. He got evicted from the penthouse suite. He started to go down to the pawn shop to sell his designers and his rare vintage Jordans and his Cuban link chain and his Rolex, and he was doing that just so he could stay in this rundown hotel and have a little bit of food to eat. But after a couple of months, that all began to run out. And he was looking in, on Indeed for a job. He couldn't find a job. Finally, he landed a job. The only job he could get was cleaning hotel rooms. He's cleaning hotel rooms, and he's so hungry now that he would actually take some of the room service food that was left over from clients, and he would actually find himself eating that. He was at the end of his rope. He was embarrassed, he was humiliated, he was ashamed. He's like, man, how did I get here? How did I get here? Jesus continues the story in verse 17 and says, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have enough food to spare, and here I am, I'm dying of hunger. I'll go home to my father and I'll say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just please take me on as a servant. So our boy from Bayshore Boulevard decided, like, man, I need to go home. Even at home, the guys that do the landscaping at, at my dad's house, they live better than this. I, I, I have it planned out. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to tell my dad, I'm going to get my speech ready. I'm going to rehearse it. I'm going to say, Dad, I'm sorry. I, I messed up. I, I own it. Just take me back, and, and I'm, I'm not even going to be your son. I'm just going to work here. Just, just, I, I'll take care of all the landscaping. Uh, you don't have to use those guys. I'll be the guy and just let me stay in the pool house. Just, just I need a place to stay. So he had his speech all rehearsed, all ready. Had no way to get home. So he packed up the little bit that he had. He said, all right, well, I'm going to hitchhike home. And so it took him a couple of weeks to hitchhike all the way from Vegas, all the way back to Tampa. But he gets home. He's in Tampa. And immediately, he goes straight home, and he's walking down Bayshore Boulevard. And his dad is sitting at the porch of the mansion. He's sitting there, and he's just looking out at Tampa Bay. And he sees this guy walking down the street that kind of reminds him of his son. And he's like, man, that kind of looks like my son. Oh, but man, look at, look at that T-shirt. Look, look, he's just all about that. Oh, that's not him. It looks homeless, right? So he's just like looking out. And his son gets to the end of the sidewalk and starts to then walk up the sidewalk to the house. And their eyes lock. And he sees, it is my son. And he jumps up off the porch of the mansion. And he begins to run down the sidewalk gets halfway and embraces his son, hugs him, begins to weep. And his son begins to start with his speech. You know, the speech that, oh, dad, I'm so sorry. I messed up and, and I, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. And his dad's like, shh. And he calls the butler and he says, Jeffrey, <laughs> yo, G. Like, bring out the best robe the best jacket bring out the family ring look at his shoes bring out a pair of Jordans from his brother's closet <laughs> call burn steakhouse order the finest steaks invite everybody to come to the party tonight we're gonna have a feast 
My son that was lost is now found. My son that was dead is now alive. Let the party begin. And that story that Jesus told, Luke chapter 15, that father represents God the Father. And all of us mess up. We leave home, our spiritual home sometimes because we want it now. Sometimes we can't wait on God's timing. We try to make up our own timing, right? And we leave home. We want it now. We get undisciplined. We get dissipated and we indulge in all those sensual pleasures. And then we find that it leaves us broken and empty and messed up and we're ashamed. We're so ashamed. And many times pride keeps us from coming back to God. And fear and worry. Because we're like, is God going to reject me? Is God going to crush me? If I show up at church, will lightning strike? I didn't see no lightning today. You good. But see, Luke chapter 15, the story that Jesus paints it paints a different picture, doesn't it? It paints a, a loving God that is gracious, that is forgiving, that is kind. There's still going to be consequences, right? But the Father, the Heavenly Father has His arms open wide and says, come back home. I got you. I love you. I got a plan for you. And He says, you're not a servant, you're a son, you're a daughter. And I know that there is some sons and some daughters here today that have left home and the Heavenly Father's arms wide open today brought you here and customized this message for you to say, come back home. I love you, I got you. I wanna pray with you. If you bow your heads around the room, if you're worshiping online with us, if you pause and pray, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Tommy, this is speaking to me. I've messed up. I've been spiritually undisciplined. I've indulged in some things that I shouldn't have. And there's been distance between me and God. But I need to come back home to him. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand. If you could say, that's me today. I need to come back home. Awesome. I see you. I see hands up all over. God is... <sighs> God's working in this place. If you're worshiping online, just type in the chat, pray for me. If you're here today and maybe you've never even been home, but for the first time you're feeling like, man, I need a relationship with God, I want you to raise your hand too. So it might not even like, I can't even connect with the come back home. I've never been home, but God is saying, you're going to come to your real home today. Here's what I want to do today in this service. I want to pray a prayer with you right where you're at, in your seats. And I want to ask you to make these words your words. Your heart's cry, your prayer. The gospel, the good news. We've all messed up. We can't fix it. We've all been like the lost son. We've went away and did some stupid things. And we can't fix it. Our Heavenly Father knew that. That's why he sent his only son, Jesus, down here to the earth die on the cross for our mistakes, our sins, our problems, our issues. Jesus came down and paid that sentence. Three days later, he resurrected. And because of that, you can have new life. You can have forgiveness. You can have eternal life. Your whole life can change here on earth from this day moving forward. And it will if you fully say, God, I believe and I'm going to follow you. And you commit to do that doesn't mean you'll never fall again or mess up. You probably will. We all do. But you keep getting back up with God's help and God's strength. And if you're here today, you raised your hand or you're worshiping online, you said, man, I need to come back home. I want to invite you to pray this prayer. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your unconditional love. I thank you for bringing me back home. I admit I've messed up. I've sinned, I've been undisciplined, I've 
indulged in some things that I shouldn't have. And I ask you to forgive me. Make me brand new. I commit today on Back to Church Sunday to come back home, have a relationship with you, follow your plan for my life. Help me to take my next steps. Give me courage. Give me discipline. Give me community around me. God, I want to represent you. Thank you for not giving up on me, for customizing today's message just for me. Pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Y'all are quiet today, but we're going to get loud here in a second because we want to celebrate what God just did in this moment. All the people that just said yes to Jesus, all the people that just came back home. Come on. Yeah. Okay. A whole bunch of people just prayed that prayer, and I want to ask you to take a step right now to be a little bit bold, and some of you, this might make you uncomfortable, but it really shouldn't because you're with family now. You're family, and we want to celebrate the decision you, you just made, but we want to give you some tools and some steps for your journey. We want to just pray that prayer. Okay, God bless you out. Like, no, we want to give you some tools. If you need a Bible, we have Bibles for you. I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Next Steps on Your Spiritual Journey, and uh, we want to put one of these in your hands as well. Um, my guy Montel Jordan wrote the forward forward and just want to bless you with one of these simple small book to take your next steps and uh, if you need some prayer additionally uh, we have some people that are going to pray with you our prayer team is ready over there so uh, here's what we're going to do I'm going to just I'm going to count down from three and if you just prayed that prayer um, I want you to get up out of your seat we're going to celebrate you you're going to walk this way I'm going to give you a high five and a pound and you're going to walk out the room, and they're going to connect with you. So three, come on, if you just came back home, we want to know. Two, one. Come on, make some noise for these people. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, make some noise, family. Give these people a standing ovation. This is beautiful. Come on, y'all. All right, Ma, let's go. Yeah. That's what's up. Make some noise for my guy, Tony, on the video. Let's go, Tone. Come on, come on. Anybody else that prayed that prayer? Come on. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is beautiful. Stay standing. Stay standing. Stay standing, y'all. This is what God does when you love your city and when you pray. Say, God, send us people that need to get reconnected with you. And I want to encourage you guys, continue to bring people, invite people, share with people. God, how many of y'all know God's doing something special here? I'm not saying our church is better than anybody else, but this is not your average church. God is moving here in a special way. If you look around the room, look at this diverse family. Multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-class. This looks like the city. Sounds like the city. It's wild like the city. All right? Man, we believe that this is just the beginning of this new season, this era of what God is doing at our church. And so, man, go out and be missionaries now. We're going to read our mission statement in just a minute. But don't miss it. Tap in, plug in. If you haven't been to the 3D growth track, it's going to be starting the first Sunday of October in both services. We're going to do 1145 this month too because uh, some people, they, they just won't come to 10 o'clock. They can't get up that early. They're not as good as y'all. Right? But inside of the program that you got, there's a bunch of different things that are coming up at Crossover. Tap in, get involved. Uh, if you're here again for the first time, the center of the lobby, we got a free gift bag for you. Definitely uh, want to connect with you and put that in your hand, get you plugged in. Uh, where's all the fellas at in the house? All the fellas. We got an event. 
We got an event coming up uh, this Friday, coming up at Top Golf. If you want to tap into that, it's on the website, on the register page. All the ladies, where's the chosen ladies at? Y'all got like a brunch cruise coming up next month. Definitely want to tap into that. Um, young adults, there, there's a big thing coming up next weekend for you guys, um, Young Adults Sunday. Uh, for every age group category, there's, we have stuff here to help you grow and take your next steps at Crossover. So definitely take that program home with you. Tap in, download the app, follow us on social media, stay connected. And uh, we're going to go ahead and read our mission statement. We want to send you out to live life in 3D. That's what we call it here, discover, develop, and display. And so if y'all can help me out and read our mission statement together on the count of three. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Our mission is to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ every area of our lives. God bless you, family. We'll see you next week. Let's go.